Hello and thank you for watching this video. We'll try to keep it as short as possible. For those of you who have not met me, my name is Peter Van Helsdingen. And in a couple of weeks, I hope you will never have to wear one of these ever again. So I appreciate you watching the video right from the beginning. The reason of this video is to basically give you knowledge, not only on the food that you'll be eating, but on the company that will be serving you the day of your wedding. This is an exciting year for festivities, events, and catering in Calamus Estate Winery. We are serving in our 50th year, and we can't be more excited. And at the end of the day, without you, our valued clients, our brides, our grooms, our over 180 corporate clients, we would be nothing. So thank you. Today, you're gonna to be seeing a food display like no other. If any of you are expecting it to be the Food Network, that will not be. I can guarantee you. Just by looking at me, you will know that. Although I have been on Food Network now three times, personally myself, great friends with Bobby Flay when I visit in Las Vegas, this will not be of that. Today you're going to be showcasing some of our fantastic menu items that we have here. All that is done by our professional team of chefs here at Festivities for all of your weddings, be it at our own venues, which we own like Calamus, or one of the venues that you have chosen. Our loyal clients like you have put your faith in us and I wanna thank you. You have made many sacrifices and I wanna tell you that we have made sacrifices for you to make sure that we are here at the end of COVID. Personally, my 25th anniversary was last year. I had to call my wife and tell her that she wasn't going to Hawaii, something that we have saved for over 15 years. It will happen, I guarantee you. This year, I promised 500 of my personal friends to be at my 50th anniversary for festivities, events, and catering on July the 16th. That won't happen. But we plan and we will party. And I promise each one of you watching this video that we will have that party. We will be there for your wedding. When I completed this video last year, we had no hope. We had no certainty. We were sitting here with no vaccines. Fast forward one year from that, I'm sitting here across from you having my first vaccine, having hope. And there's a reason why that Michaela was named Hope, her middle name. And the entire reason of that is I believe that word entirety. We have hope. We have hope that on June the 2nd, we will be opening up. We have hope that we will be serving your wedding. And we were all excited about that. In 2021, it will be the best year for you. It'll be the best year for me. And it'll be the best year for Canada. I know it because I had to live through SARS and I had to live through 9-11. And I guarantee each one of you, we will be here at the end of it. We will be enjoying a glass of wine with you at our deck at Calamus Winery. And we will be serving you at your wedding. I will personally be at your wedding probably as the head dishwasher because I got too much of a great staff to be around me, but we will be there for you. The most important thing I want you to see in this video today is not only the fantastic food that we have, but we're going to be some, doing some introductions to some of the key staff that are my backbone. For 21 years, I taught at Niagara College and I've taught now seven times for Cater Source organization and also on the Food Network. And everybody asks me all the time, the students, be it the people I'm teaching in Las Vegas, Peter, what was the day that you knew that you were successful? What was that day? What was that magic day in business? And I can tell you, sitting here now on this video, telling each one of you, it was one day and I will never forget it. The day that as an owner, I realized that if I surround myself with people that are better than me, that know how to cook food better than me, that know how to take care of my bride and grooms better than me, I was a success. And I truly believe we are Niagara's number one caterer and celebrating this 50th year anniversary, not because of anything that I have done personally, it is because of the passion that each one of my staff have that you will be meeting in this video today. Because without them, I am nothing. There is no festivities, there is no calamus. So when you're watching the video today, I hope that you love the food. I hope that you absolutely love everything that you see today, but most important, respect the amount of work that has gone into this for you. I wish we could have done our group tasting where you were sampling each one of these 48 menu items, but I'm hoping this video gives you a little snapshot of what you will be seeing on your special day. I thank you and I appreciate it. Without you, we would not be here.
Hi guys, how are you? Uh, Michaela Van Helsing in here. Um, I wish I was a pleasure of um, having my speech or talking to you all at our open house, our annual open house. And it's very unfortunate that uh, for a second year in the row, uh, we've had to cancel it due to COVID. Um, but we are being very hopeful coming into the 2021 season. Um, great news with uh, over half of the population already being vaccinated and soon to be 75% will have their first dose as well. We look forward as a festivities and Calamus, so either hosting you at Calamus or at another venue um, that we cater at as well. Um, we look forward to serving not only you both, but all of your guests, family and friends on your special day. As my father mentioned, we wouldn't be the company we are if it wasn't for the amazing team um, that we surround ourselves with. Um, I'm the, uh, as all of you and most of you may know, I'm the sales and event coordination, coordination manager um, for both Feast Cities Events and Catering and Calamus. I coordinate a great team um, of event planning staff that ass um, assist to make your special day um, a dream come true um, as our goal at Festivities and Calamus is to make your goal, um, your dream wedding come true. That, that wedding that you dreamed of ever since you were a little girl, a little boy. Um, and that's what we're here for. Um, so we thank you very much and you got a great video ahead of you. We are showcasing the entire menu um, that you will have on your Festivities login. Um, again, thank you very much. We look forward to serving you on your very special day. Enjoy. Welcome to Festivities Events and Catering and Calamus State Winery's Food Network video. And why I say Food Network is we're going to be creating some magic in the kitchen today. What we'd like to do for you, our client, you may have booked already, you may not have booked already, but what we wanted to do is give you a true showcase of what we can do and what we have been famous for for the last 50 years. 2021 will be our 50th year, and today's video will be showcasing every course from start to finish from your appetizers that we make fresh for you, all the way to the desserts that we will be serving you as your last bite from there. So in front of you, you're gonna see some fantastic dishes today. It's gonna be in a different segment. So it will be edited as you will see the appetizers first. You will then see all the hors d'oeuvres. You will then see the salad course, the pasta, the mains, some of the fantastic above and beyond items that you can choose for your special day or your corporate event. And then we'll get into the dessert, which I've already had three before the video has started, as you will see. So I appreciate your time today watching this video first off. And the most important thing that I'd like to tell you today is I have a chef coat on. And as the owner of the company and been running it for over 28 years, I don't cook the food. So everybody relax. I am the head dishwasher. I am the one that is going to be worrying about logistics the day of your wedding. Why? Because I've got great event planners that plan your wedding. I've got fantastic people that work in the front of the house and will serve you. And today you're going to meet some of the exact people that are going to be cooking your food today. The man or the head honcho, the grand pooba, if you like to call it, is Rob. And I'll introduce to you Rob. Rob has just joined us last year as the executive chef. He is now managing a culinary team here at our 8,000 square foot production facility in Wellham, which we're very proud of. We've been here now for close to 18 years and only the future waits. So today we're going to start with some of the appetizers. I'm going to hand it over to Rob and he'll give you some explanation of what he's making today. Thanks, Rob. So first of all, we have uh, my barbecue pork uh, on a crustade with some Texas mayo. Great little uh, appetizer we can start off your weddings with. Now you said Texas, so you got me interested and you, I see pulled pork. So what's the mayo? What, what's inside of that? In the mayo, I put a little bit of hot, a little bit of zesty uh, citrus. Uh, just to really make the pork and the barbecue sauce zing and, and really taste fantastic. Who likes hot? We love it. Go ahead, next one. Next, I have our jerk chicken appetizer that has starts with a base of pea puree, some marinated jerk chicken, and some mango hot sauce, just for a little extra zing on that one as well. Hit all senses on your palate when you eat it. When you eat it. One of the things you're going to be hearing during this entire video is that you can customize it. So if, for instance, if you don't like green puree, if you do not like something that is hot and you want it to have mild for all your guests, but when you're planning your special event, make sure you always remember you are feeding the mass. It is simple. If for instance, a bride and groom, they don't like something, it's their wedding. We will customize a plate just for them. Keep that in mind when you're planning it. You are always feeding the masses and our goal is to make everyone happy at your, your event, not just one, two or three people. Okay. Fantastic. <music> Fantastic. 
The next thing we're going to be showcasing you is the most popular salads that we serve here at Festivities in Kalamas Estate Winery. One of the things I love about salads, and I am not a green thumb by any way, but we have built a terrific garden at Kalamas. Come by, please enjoy a glass of wine. Ask for me personally, Peter, and I'll be the first one in my garden bringing you some fresh herbs that you could take home with you. Every event that we do at Calamus, we are freshly picking the herbs every time, with the exception of May, because there's just none in the ground as of yet until May long weekend. One of the things I want to talk about before we go forward anymore in the video is the different types of styles that we serve at Festivities. We all know the traditional buffet service. We like to step it up a notch and do food stations. The next thing we like to do is doing plated service, which you're doing the individual plated items here. The most important thing I want you to all look at when you're looking at this video is the portion sizes that we serve at Festivities. I know half of you watching this may say, Peter, your portions are humongous or too big for my guess. The other half that are like me are saying it's not enough. And there's a couple tricks that we do or magic and catering to get by that. In front of you, you will see the different types of salad, which we have labeled here. So you can go back to the video and take a look. Each one of the ingredients is always fresh. That's the first thing I like to say. Nothing is store bought when it comes to it. If it is store bought and I will be sharing it to you when we get to the mains, we'll be the first one to be honest with you. But I'd like to talk about plated versus family style. For an average event that we do, which is 100 guests on a typical four course meal, it will take you to do a plated meal two to two and a half hours because your guests decide the speed of the meal. If you are choosing family style for the same 100 guests, we are now knocking at least 45 minutes off that time. And the most important part of it is myself, and I don't know about Rob, but I think you can agree. Mm. Can you eat this whole salad if you like? I could try, but I'd be full afterwards. I'll tell you that much. So this would be a typical salad that we would serve to a table of eight. The nice thing about that is we are already ordered enough for two and a half platters per table. So we are happy to replenish it. When we do a plated meal, like this beautiful watermelon salad that was created here, there is no replenishment. The chef loves it because he knows exactly what his costs are going in down to the ounce. This is an exact eight ounce salad. Rob knows that that's standardized because we standardize all of our menus here. So if you're asking the owner who has run the company now for over 26 years, what his favorite style service is, is definitely family style. I'm going to get Rob to explain each of the salads that are here a little more detail and especially the one that he just made in front of you, which is exactly the same here which is my favorite, which is the kale and heritage blend salad. So Rob, I'll let you just go through the salads. And let us know what the ingredients think are. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. So first uh, we'll start with the one I just made. Uh, it's our heritage uh, kale blend salad. Uh, very simple for the, uh, for the ingredients, but fantastic flavors. Some roasted butternut squash, some candied pecans, some feta, and of course it's dressed with an herb vinaigrette. Next, uh, we have our classic Caesar salad. For those of you who are traditionalists, of course, we have to have this on there. Caesar salad with Caesar dressing, bacon, croutons, and some broken parm. Do you buy, do you buy fake ever fake bacon bits? I've never. I make them fresh here in the oven. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next one. Next. This one is a Penzanella salad. Uh, and so it has, traditionally, that's a bread salad, but I kind of fill it up and make it a bit more healthy for everybody. So we got some, of course, you can see the croutons. I have some uh, gouda, red onions, uh, radicchio, the salad mix with a fantastic uh, balsamic honey uh, vinaigrette. Lastly, we have the watermelon salad with a lime citrus vinaigrette, some red onions, and of course the fresh, beautiful watermelons. One of the things I love to do to the watermelon salad is do a tinted balsamic dressing on top also. We could do a thick balsamic, hint it with some of Calamus's red wine because we like to infuse most of the courses with everything fresh from the farm, local, local, local. So on top of this, what I always like to do is like a little tinted balsamic also. Again, we go back to how you can customize it. If you're not a Spanish onion person, you may choose what it is. We will never say to you, you have to do this, you have to do that. You are the client and if it wasn't for you, we would not be here right now. I hope you enjoyed the salads. Next one is the pasta course, which you see I am definitely a professional at. Any of those diets that take out the word carbohydrate, Peter is not your man. Very excited to announce the pastas that we do. And I'm very excited to announce to each one of you, our clients, that you may choose any pasta for your special day. If it's a dry pasta and you're happy with it, but I'm going to give you a few hints. 
every bride that I cater to over the last 50 years, and I remember my father and now Michaela, they always want the spaghetti or linguine. We will not allow you as a bride to do spaghetti and linguine because you will see what happens on your dress when we give you a long pasta. So most of the pastas that we are featuring in our experience are the small one bite size that you can grab with one fork. Another thing that every client asks is, Peter, why can't we serve half white sauce and half red sauce? Well, tonight for dinner, I want each one of you to go home and drink a glass of tomato juice. And then right after that, I want you to drink a glass of milk. And I want you to wait for about a half an hour and call me and let me know what happens. From our experience, we can only guide you to the best decisions for your special event. In front of you, you will see a couple different pastas, but Rob will be making one also for you. Our most popular pasta over the last years for our brides, and it goes in trends as it is, is our butternut squash ravioli. Our butternut squash ravioli has um, fresh bacon on top of it, of course, fresh herbs, as you've heard from before. And then you get into the different types of pasta, which is the uh, penne's. And I'm going to let Rob explain once again, because he's the one that prepares them all, a little bit what it is. But I can tell you, one of the things I miss serving the most, and I'm going to bring in somebody here, my rock over the kitchen. Jordan, if you can come in, that would be fantastic. So what I want to say to you is that this lovely woman who is shy, who doesn't like to be on videos, is the rock of this kitchen. We all need a great leader, and we do have a great leader in Rob. But Jordan has now been with me for how many years? Nine years. Were you a student of mine somewhere? Yes, at Niagara College. At Niagara College, and you still stayed with me even after I was your teacher. Yes. So it was. Jordan is a rock, and you will see her at many of the events that we do here. She specializes in a lot of our vegetarian dishes you're going to be seeing in the video later, and some of the specialty dishes that we have. But I promised her she could only has to be in the video for 10 seconds. Thanks very much, Jordan. One of my favorite dishes that we serve that is a compliment to any of our pastas, but especially the penne, is our family recipe that goes back 50 years. And that is basically our penne with our meatballs and our Italian sausage. Not many weddings nowadays, if you can all remember as parents and you can always remember back, every wedding had this as a staple item. My father brought this recipe over from Holland for his meatballs and we still use it to this day. So if you're looking at something a little bit different, I would not serve two mains and this. I would maybe delete one of your mains and then serve the meatballs and the sausage with it. Um, once I serve you, I will tell you the special ingredient in the, in the magic meatballs also. Rob, can you go through why or what your favorite pasta dish is here and why? Oh, 100%. Uh, I get my favorite pasta would be the penne with the red sauce. The simple, it's very simple, not over, it doesn't overdo your palate. And just to finish it off for a little zing is a little basil oil and a little broken pot. Now, if you're someone like my size, can I get another plate of that? This one, no. However, one thing that's really great that I love to do is serve them family style because then I can re replenish these plates as you guys need them and everyone will get as much pasta as they like. Because as I mentioned be prior, I can eat probably this whole platter on my own. What is the next, can you let us know about maybe some of the ingredients in the white sauce and some of the ingredients in this pasta? Certainly, of course I can. So this is a, uh, a sage cream sauce. So with this one, I've just some onions and garlic some of our fantastic white wine from Calamus. Uh, reduce that down, put the cream in, let that reduce, some sage, and then that's a great accompaniment to our butternut squash ravioli. And as I said, we have our crispy prosciutto and some fennel on top of that to just, it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, next, we have our pasta primavera. Once again, uh, very great for vegetarians as well, because uh, it's got, uh, Onions, red peppers, uh, tomatoes, roasted garlic on penne with a little cream and a little uh, ricotta. And remember, each one of these, when he says penne, it can be um, bow tie. It can be any pasta that you prefer personally as a client. Remember, we won't dictate to you what you have to have. It's your event. We can only advise you what has worked well for us over the last 50 years. I hope you enjoyed the pasta course. Now we get to the main act, and the main act is all the fabulous mains that we prepare for you. But I think before we serve or even show you some of the mains is you have to come up with some type of foundation. And although I've said local many times throughout this video, there's one thing that I will not allow chef or any of my culinary team to do is, and that's quality. I'll give you an example. In front of you here, you have a pork chop, which you can buy from one of 10 sources, as you know it. 
when you get a size of we are like festivities where you're doing just over 1800 events a year and there are multiple events on one night and you have a kitchen the size that we do you want to make sure that quality is the most important and that it's standardized i'm not ashamed to say that we have a recipe book for everything that you see in front of you here and the reason for that is that everything has to be exactly the same at every event with the exception of the customization that you choose as a client in front of you you will see a pork chop and the pork chopper you can purchase at many different locations we only buy from cisco food service which you're happy to look up it's the largest food service company in canada right across north america because they guarantee hasap approved i only buy and will only allow rob to buy grade a so you can get it in different levels you can get it in different but at the only point that it is 100 hasap certified I taught for 21 years in Niagara College advanced food safety. So when you're seeing a lot of the items that you're making here, although we will say local, I'll be the first one to say to you that my beef comes from Alberta because that is the best place in Canada that produces beef. Okay. When you're looking at some of our chicken dishes here, which I love, they are bought local. When you're looking at some of the pork, I can tell you exactly the farm that it comes to from, but it's not in Niagara. The goal is to get as much quality product as we can as long as it is HACCP certified. So we're going to go through all the different mains that you will see here in front of you. Rob's gonna explain the different sauces. Um, when you see the mains in front of you here, we've chosen the first three to look exactly with the expectation of what it's going to be like when you put it down in front of your guests. So when Rob's explaining each one of these, we will tell you the ingredients. We won't go tell you all 90 ingredients, but we'll highlight what the ingredients are. But I want to be very firm and tell everybody this is the portion size that you will be receiving for your event. So therefore, you're not going to be getting two or three or four multiples of it. And that's where, again, you can go back and customize it, saying, Peter, instead of your short ribs, I'd like to have four short ribs per plate. You are more than happy to customize it as you go through it. There may be some additional costs. Don't ask Peter or Rob anything of the cost. That's why you have a professional event planner. They'll be happy to share the additional costs of each one of these plates with you if you choose to have that, if they're not included in your specific package. So I'm going to hand it over to the professional who prepared all this fabulous food for you. And he's going to give you a little introduction and a little detail on each one of these plates you see in front of you. So first I'll start off with the halibut dish. It's got a beautiful Mediterranean uh, topper. This one I've served with our garlic mashed potatoes and seasonal vegetables. When you say Mediterranean, I'm Dutch. So what does Mediterranean mean? <laughs> Mediterranean means uh, just assortment of vegetables, uh, such as like red onions, some zucchini, um, squash, whatever you can put on there. Fantastic. Next one. Sorry. So this is the bacon wrap coffee crusted uh, with the uh, filet with the espresso cream sauce. And is this your favorite or not? This is my this is my favorite of all the dishes. And you have to be honest with everybody. Where what is the base of this sauce? And no one will believe this on the video. But where do you make Peter go? prior to every event, just an hour before a service to make that sauce. And you could be honest with people. Oh, it's Let okay, know. Starbucks, I'm very specific on that. But why Starbucks? Well, what's in Starbucks on well, that Well, Starbucks sauce? has a really great quality of coffee and espresso, and that is very important. I'm making a very fantastic product. And he'll never let me get it the day before or three days before, only an hour before. So it's the freshest as it is. So we're the first ones to tell you, if we're using an outside company, we're proud of it. We'll be happy to put own to it also. Go to the next one, Rob, thanks. Right. Next, we have our braised short ribs with a uh, red wine and cherry sauce. Uh, this one I've served with some paprika wedges and of course some seasonal veg. Now, out of all the vegetables that you see here, and I mean, it's fantastic. I wanna tell everybody that normally your event planner and on your menus, you will not see that the vegetables listed because we are in seasons in Niagara. If you're having an event in January and you want fresh local vegetables, you won't get them. We will tell you that we're buying it from Mexico or whoever we are. But in the summer, we have bountiful local fresh produce here. Trust us that we will choose a vegetable on your plate that will complement not only what you are serving, but will also highlight local. And there is forced to fresh. Many times, even with sending me out for coffee, Rob will send one of our drivers to a local farm to hand pick and freshly do it. Can you explain which is your favorite potato out of everyone that you see here? Well, as I said, the one I love the most is a uh, dofu wall potato. It's a great product. It's nice and creamy. And as a chef, I get a lot of compliments for, for serving that potato. So 
I love it for that as well. Okay, so to me that looks like a scallop potato. So explain to me what the difference between a scallop potato and that potato. Well, this potato is very similar to a scallop potato. This is formed, it has some cream uh, and potato. This one doesn't have as much cheese as a, a traditional scallop potato. Now on my mashed potatoes, why do I see the skin still in them? Oh, because that's number one, that's where you get most of your uh, nutrients from your potatoes. And I just love the rustic look of it. So before we go on to the rest of the mains that he will show you individually, um, instead of having them plated as the entire, because I believe some of the mains need to be standalone, I'll go through their antipasto platter. One of the most popular items at our winery, uh, because of the fresh cheeses that we serve, um, you'll notice at Calamus we have a cheese bunker called a Gouda Cheese Girl. If you're wondering who the Gouda Cheese Girl is, that's Michaela, by the way. But one of the most customizable thing that we serve at events is the traditional Italian antipasto. And there is no such thing as traditional antipasto anymore because normally at Calamus, we'll put Gouda cheese on it. And we might put one, two, or three. The one that you see in front of you here, uh, one of the things that we always do is we like to use, put all of your olives in a ramekin or a container so it doesn't bleed all over the plate and not everything tastes like an olive on your plate. You'll notice that it's always a standard, usually at least three different types of meat. And your event planner will ask you, would you like capicola, salami, which of the fresh fruit items you like? So probably the most customizable plate that you will have here is in fact the antipasto plate if you're choosing to have that for your event. One of the things that you will see is the crostinis. I want Rob to explain to you because I think they're special. So Rob's going to explain the crostinis to you and then go through some of these individual plates with you. Go ahead, Rob. Well, the crostinis actually get some fresh baguettes and I slice them up in-house. Uh, a little bit of olive oil, salted pepper, and some thyme, and I uh, just bake in the oven. So they're a fresh, fantastic uh, complement for your antipasto platter. So next I have the Atlantic salmon dish, little uh, maple glaze, and served with a fennel slaw. Next down the line, this is uh, one of our many uh, chicken su supreme dishes. Once again, if you're very stuck on something you want them stuffed with, I can definitely do that. My favorite is the prosciutto and Asiago stuffed supreme. And this one, I have a mushroom cream sauce that I've paired it with. Now, one of the things we should do is maybe explain to the people what a supreme is and why do we use a supreme and not a normal six ounce chicken breast that you see in the grocery store. Very rare you walk into the grocery store and you see a Supreme. And a Supreme is basically a boneless chicken breast, which is, it is boneless, with what at the end of it, Rob? A drumstick. A drumstick. And that drumstick is your chicken wing that you enjoy. We like to serve it on the plate because it gives it a great plate presentation. Also, the skin remains on the chicken. So if you have to remove it, if for any reason that you do not want it, but it remains that your chicken will always be tender. I'm telling you a lot of our industry secrets here, but this is one of my favorite dishes that we serve chicken is a, especially when we serve it as you see it here, is probably one of the most favorite dishes that we serve to our guests throughout many of the events. That doesn't matter if you're having a Christmas party, a wedding, that is by far the most popular dish. And as mentioned with Rob, you can stuff it with anything that you like to. I have my own favorites, Rob has his favorites, and that's the best thing about it, it's fully customizable. The next thing I will say before you go on is again, an example of a family style main. So please remember when you are serving a main course item, like Rob's beautiful tenderloin that you have here, and I'm gonna bring it here closer just to give you an exact idea, okay? So you have a choice, you are our client. You can choose everybody to serve individually plated. For 100 guests, this will take us 45 minutes to an hour to create for you. Many hotels out there and other, we'll just say others, will decide to put a dome on this plate it up two hours before and put it in something called a hot box. At festivities and at Calamus, we plate every plate individually. We do not hot box it. We do not put domes on our food. Everything is done fresh. So for an average wedding for of 100 or an event of 100, this will take about 45 to 50 minutes to get out, which is one of the reasons why we don't prefer that your guests have a choice of entree when you're doing plate it. Because if you can just imagine if we're sitting in the kitchen and Rob has a list, table number one, four beef, four chicken, one vegetarian, plate. Table number two, seven chicken, one beef, one vegetarian, plate. So if you're going to be giving your guests individual choices, be it one, two, or three meats, or a vegetarian choice, you just need to know for your timeline will be added about 30 minutes onto that timeline. Thus, the number one most popular is if you're serving it family style. 
This is our most popular beef item here, which is our roasted strip loin. We don't serve roast beef at festivities. We haven't, we did 38 years ago. Since then, as we have, this is dish has been next to the chicken, probably our most popular, which is our whole roasted strip loins. We slice them down, we slice them so they're tender. You don't even need a steak knife. Many of the events, we won't put a steak knife, although you're having a roasted strip loin, which is there. I'm not gonna even try to explain the sauce. I'll let Rob do that. But I did wanna tell you a little bit about the dynamics and the timing. Is this the only platter they're going to get? No. When Rob orders the food, he orders one piece of beef if you're doing individually plated. When Rob orders family style, it costs festivities more money. The reason why is we have to have enough for one and a half platters per table. So if you have any Peters sitting at your table, we will make sure that they get enough beef and that no one will go home hungry. Never have never run out of food in 50 years and I promise you your event will not be that one. So Rob, if you can explain maybe the special of that sauce, Certainly. what makes it, and maybe the way that we cook our strip loin using this fancy oven, which is you asked me to buy for you very specifically, and maybe just point to it so we don't make cameraman happy. Uh, to let him explain a little bit of the altar sham and how that beef is cooked and then maybe just going through a few of the other ones. Certainly. So, uh, first of all, we'll talk about the beef. It's a fantastic, as, uh, as, as Peter said, slow roasted st strip loin. And I was told why it was first started, not to change the recipe because the guests love it. And I've kept that, uh, that promise to Peter. How I maintain that slow roast is in this fantastic combination oven. And in fact, there's a probe in here so I can actually make sure that the beef is cooked exactly the way it is. So when you get it served, it's all gonna have a nice, beautiful uh, pink to it and finished off fantastic. A anytime you do a beef, I mean, if you're doing it at home, if I can give you any hint, what my chefs have taught me, low and slow. Low and slow and you, you always have a fantastic meat. You try to rush it, you try to serve something in a large loin, it just doesn't work. Perfect, I'll let you go on the next one. Well, and just to go on to the sauce, once again, I'm featuring some of Calves' red wine sauce. So I start off with some onions and garlic. Love onions and garlic. And then I put in some red wine, let that reduce down. And then, of course, I uh, add in my uh, house-made demi. And, uh, and then there's the finished sauce right there that goes on top of this slow roasted strip loin. Fantastic. The next one. <clears throat> the next one uh, is the slow roasted pork tenderloin. Uh, this one I've uh, accompanied with a, a nice compound uh, butter with some zi uh, citrus. And once again, I'm using some white wine uh, from Calamus for the sauce. And now I see that the, and the one of the most biggest misconceptions about food is, especially when you get the chicken, chicken there should be no pink whatsoever in it. Now when you get the pork, as a professional chef certified, should there be pink in pork? 100% there should be a little bit of pink. You can definitely, without a, uh, a, without a doubt, you can serve pork uh, to medium with no fear of any anything. No, don't be wrong. My grandparents and parents would have never cooked pork with any pink in it. But the uh, our beautiful public health has let me know that as long as I cook it up to 137 degrees Fahrenheit, we're good to go. Remember, it's your event. You can customize as much as you like. Great, Rob, why don't you go on to the next one? Right. So this is uh, our braised brisket. I braised, so slow braised that in the oven for about three hours, bring it out, let it cool. Then before your event, I throw it on the barbecue, heat it up back in the barbecue, gets a nice crispiness from the barbecue and some house-made barbecue sauce. Now, because of COVID, nobody knows what the word barbecue means anymore. You're right, exactly, so for sure. So one of my favorite things is standing in the vineyard at Calamus and actually serving this to you. You're gonna see Peter working at many of these stations. I haven't done any of the work. Rob has slow roasted this for three hours. When your guests come up to the barbecue, we're actually just cutting them fresh right off the barbecue. My next dish that you'll see with Rob explaining, I, per as an owner, I did not like. I told him that he wasn't allowed to serve it. He chose to serve the next one he's going to explain it to you last year at an event at the winery. By far the most popular dish that we have ever served at the winery, at one of our events. Go ahead and let him know which one it is. Next I have the pork chop dish. It comes from the rib end, so I get a nice beautiful French bone on the end. I take that, I put it in, my, in our house made blackening spice, pan sear that, and then cook it uh, up to medium once again in the oven just so it re retains a lot of moisture and, and flavor. 
And then I finished off with an apple cider butter sauce and some fresh diced apples. Apple cider butter sauce. If you have never tried that before, it is fantastic. Hope you enjoyed some of the mains. We're now going to go into some of the vegetarian. And I am not a vegetarian. Uh, again, great chefs that have chosen some of the great vegetarian dishes for you. The biggest thing that we have at all of our weddings, when somebody has cho chosen a vegetarian dish, it, it was something substantial. And that's what we want. Many of you have been to an event before, and I'll give you an example is my wife, Rosalie, who has ordered a vegetarian dish, and then we have to stop on the way home to get something to eat. That will not happen. Each of these dishes that are vegetarian, we spend more time designing. Some of the dishes that we've already went through, we've been using for 50 years. We constantly reinvent with current trends and diets out there. We all know the top five diets right now. So our goal is to stay ahead of the trend and offer your guests what they're looking for. And of course, you, the client. So each of the dishes, when Rob goes through them for the vegetarian, I want you to look, will my guests enjoy it? Will they be substantial enough? Is this something that I'm proud to put my name on? And really, that's the fact at festivities. I ask every chef when they're about to put a meal on. Sometimes I don't make it to the event until the last 30 seconds, until just before we're about to serve because we have four events going on. And I'll walk into the chef and I'll say, stop. Are you happy to put your name on that dish? And that is what I think Rob has done here today. And you'll see that when he goes into the vegetarian dishes. So go ahead, Rob. Go explain all the vegetarian. 100%. So first we have... Uh, tofu and what I've done with the tofu just to zig it up because I, I know when everybody hears tofu they think oh boring not this one uh, I put seared this uh, with some black and white sesame seeds and then put it with a uh, carrot and ginger sauce on top next I have a, uh, a red pepper that I've stuffed with uh, with keen uh, with quinoa and what is quinoa for everybody if they don't know what quinoa is? Oh, what is quinoa, quinoa is an ancient grain. It actually has so many great uh, nutrients and protein and everything in there. Uh, what a great uh, vegetarian and vegan option for them. Next, we have the vegetarian lasagna. Well, how do you make a vegetarian lasagna, you may ask? Well, in this, I've put layers of sweet potato, red pepper, uh, polenta, and some vegan cheese. Uh, uh, just to make sure it has that nice uh, stringy flavor to it. And it's not always served in a French onion bowl, but it's just something we thought would be creative and we have done it many events in the past. It might be served in a ramekin, it might be served in a normal pasta bowl, but our goal is to show you our range that we have here available. And the last vegetarian dish for the day? This is a uh, pan seared uh, zucchini steak dish as it were, and I've uh, served that with a curry and blistered tomato sauce. I love when he says the word curry and blistered sauce. It's a, ma it's a matter of taking simple, fresh, local foods and then adding his own personal touch on it. And I think that's why I have so much respect for each of the chefs. I hope you all enjoyed the mains. And remember that each one is customizable to your own tastes and flavors. And we'd be happy to share that with you. Thank you. So next I'm gonna be putting together the blackened pork dish just so you can see how I do it. First of all, I take the black, the pork and I put it onto my blackening spice. Make sure it has a very nice coating. Only one side though, because it'll get too salty. Then I'll literally put it in there. And really what I'm looking for is to make sure that the spice actually gets blackened because that releases a lot of the fantastic flavor from the pork itself. As that's going on, I'm getting the sauce ready to go. This is the uh, apple cider butter sauce I was talking about. And the back, I have some of the fresh seasonal vegetables as well. And as you can see, as I flip that over, it's got a nice, the, the spice has actually gone from the nice, the orangey red into a more of a blackened sear. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it right in the oven. And now that it's been in the oven, it's a nice medium. I'm gonna start plating that for us. So I have also some nice roasted mini red potatoes I've, I've put together here. And this would be like an accompaniment you have on your dish. One of the many that we have here at Kalmas and Festivities. The pork. Then some nice seasonal veggies to accompany your entree. And then to finish off, 
with the apple cider butter sauce. And then a fantastic garnish of some diced apples. Now we get to the most important part of the video and that's the dessert course. And over the years of me running the company, my father, probably 26 years now, the one thing that I have always found about the dessert is the keeping it simple. And again, going back to the local, going back to the fresh area of it. In Niagara, we are so bountiful with our fresh fruits and vegetables. And to give you an example is we work with a family, a great Dutch family called the Tigelaers. And they own something called the Red Barn and that's on Jordan Avenue in, in Niagara. And if you haven't been, run because they make some fantastic desserts and they are first strawberry farmers and then second one of the great daughters and now the entire family have expanded into the pie business. And it's probably one of our still our most popular desserts. When you're giving your guests any dessert, you wanna give them as much choice as possible. Again, if you are the client and you are the bride and groom and you love chocolate, you might want, because you're the bride and groom, you choose any dessert that you see in front of here. For your guests as a mass, you can choose what you would like. My personal favorite for any dessert at any of our events is pie bar. And what is a pie bar, Peter? It sounds really interesting. Well, pie bar, again, you choosing as a client two to three in-season pies, so they're fresh made the day of the event. Then our servers stand behind the table, usually a barn or bar barn, and we're cutting the desserts fresh and the pies specifically for your guests. So if you're someone like me, I can have three slices of pie, you can have a sliver of pie, so you're really customizing it to what your guests like. And usually when we do a pie bar, uh, we serve fresh cream on the pie bar. 100%. We do. So the next one is the vanilla tart. Um, and I'll let Rob explain the last three, but I, I have the passion for the first three. You can tell which ones are my favorite. Is the vanilla tart. Um, and I'll be the first one to, to be honest with every one of you. You do not make your own pastry shells. No, I do not. We purchased the pastry shells because it's something that is a fantastic product. We do make everything that goes inside of it including the fresh lemon, the fresh fruit that goes in it, and all the white chocolate mousse that goes on top. It's a bite size. Normally when it's served, I'm gonna to try to do this on video. If it doesn't work on the video, I will apologize now. But normally what we do is just before service, we basically just take it out. So that is the finishing plate. If it was up to me, I would be taking some ice wine, which is no, no additional charge to you, and I would be pouring a little ice wine on top. This is when my arm wrestle with my chef to what we should be doing. But after a big meal of serving pasta, all you can eat, serving a salad, serving a black and pork chop or a strip loin or chicken, your guests really want to cleanse their palate. And this is the time that, for the reason of pie bar, the pie bar stays out for an hour and a half. If you're serving a lemon tart, that comes off the table within five to 10 minutes. The pie bar is kept out to the side, usually by your receiving table, and then the guests can go up at their leisure. Also, the most simplest dessert to make here, is our vanilla bean ice cream. Why? Because it's the owner's favorite. We just take plain vanilla bean ice cream, which we do not make ourselves. We use a, a local dairy company here, putting fresh fruit on it. And again, it's something as simple as ice cream, fresh berries, and ice wine. I mean, if you're getting a connection or if you're trying to get your guests to enjoy or cleanse your palate at the end of the meal, it's one of the simplest desserts. So I'm gonna let Rob go through the other three remaining ones, um, and he'll explain in detail each one for you. Go ahead. First, uh, we have our chocolate flowers tort, which is an obvious option for those who have any gluten issues. Next is our New York style cheesecake. It takes some fresh seasonal berries and some whipped cream that Peter absolutely demands is on, uh, on the cheesecake. And you know what, the most important thing is maybe show them how you just whipped up the batch there. Oh, just right here, folks. Literally just did, I won't do anything less. And to be honest with everybody that's watching there too, do you make your own cheesecake? No. Right. So which, the New York style cheesecake, because you're going to get to the best cheese right. one in a minute. But this particular one, we get it from a great supplier. Mm. Correct. And we just finish it off with the fresh berries. And the last one. So, and this is the one I actually do create here in house. This is our, what we're calling our Mexican cheesecake. Start with a little puff pastry, some, cre uh, some seasoned cream cheese. I roll it and bake it fresh with some orange zest in the oven. As you can see, it has some beautiful height, has a fantastic presentation. Finish off with some dolce de luce, 
fresh berries and whipped cream. So do Doche Chaluche, just so everybody knows, what is that? Can you explain the ingredients? That is, really the ingredients on that is cream that slowly caramelized over time into, uh, into almost caramel. And why I like this one so much, it's something that your guests have not seen. Many of the desserts that we showcased here, your guests have seen before. So we always like to, step, every year we look for a new one, a new dessert to try that is an emerging trend. This one here, it keeps coming back. And it's something that's so simple because when guests says, where do you find this? How do you buy it? And you can't. I'll tell you right now that Rob is the only one that makes this. And for every event, whenever we serve this, it has great reviews because it is something unique and something different. So remember for your event, if you have a favorite dessert that you do not see here, let us know. Um, one of my brides last year, all she wanted was cotton candy. I went out and bought a bag of cotton candy. I put the whole bag on a plate for her and she was the happiest bride that we've ever had. So please, more than happy to customize your desserts. These are a sample and some of the choice have been really popular for us in the past. On behalf of the ownership of the company and on behalf of everybody, here at Festivities, Events and Catering. We want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was informative for you, helps you make some educated decisions for if you're having a special wedding with us, if you're having a corporate event for 1,800 people, or if you're having a barrel cellar dinner for 12. On behalf of all of the 47 staff here at Festivities, Events and Catering in Calamus, we, we look, look forward, forward to, to serving, serving you at your, your next, next event. event.